Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum my brothers and sisters I hope you're all performing your salahs and looking to the Quran and Hadith for guidance in all your affairs If you're watching this video and it's salah time please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done Please also check out the description section of this video to get my new dawah products and to support the channel Please excuse the change in background as I am on vacation I was sent a video by a channel member of a recent viral podcast Tristan Tate did Tristan is the brother of Muslim Reaver Andrew Tate Tristan is not Muslim, he is Christian but he respects Islam which is how we should all treat each other's faiths. In the clip I'm going to show you Tristan discusses a vile woman who shredded the Holy Quran in Denmark and a Muslim man who applied to the Swedish government to burn both the Bible and the Torah in response to the recent Quran burning that took place in Sweden on Eid al hadha The crazy part about it is that the liberal Swedish government actually approved the burning of the Jewish and Christian holy books also. It's like liberal nations hate anything that spreads a religious moral code and the belief in God. Let's roll the clip to get more context. A woman in Denmark shredded the Quran. I saw her actions described by people on Twitter, not people I like, as brave and controversial. I'm just going to give you my opinion on destroying a Quran, and then I'm going to spin it to some better news. There's no excuse to ever shred a Quran. This woman is an Iranian citizen who is disenfranchised and unhappy with the politics of Iran. If this woman had enough money, or she was industrious enough or smart enough to make her life for herself, say, in the United Arab Emirates or in Saudi Arabia, as opposed to Denmark, she'd find herself very happy with the politics of the region. She'd find herself very free. She'd find the laws around her life almost, with almost no restrictions at all. And I believe that she'd be a very happy person. So she's mad at the wrong person, one. Being mad at the politics of Iran and then burning a holy book, which is precious, sacred to billions of people around the world, is like being mad a wasp stang you and, I don't know, dropping a nuclear bomb on an island to kill everything. It's, it's actually disgusting. Uh, it's a gross overreaction. And there's no excuse to offend that many people. I mean, what is the largest population Muslim country in the world? Malaysia. You've offended every Malaysian in the country because you don't like the Ayatollah of Iran. A lot of people disagree with the politics of the Ayatollah of Iran. Iran. But there's absolutely no need to do that. Now, I tried to track down this gentleman's name because this has a pleasant ending. There's no happy ending to this kind of act, but it has a pleasant ending because it shows the dignity and the courage of our Muslim friends and brothers. In Sweden, when a similar clown was doing similar things, a Muslim man, I couldn't find his name. If you know it, tweet it to me, because I'd love to shout him out. Type it in the chat. Let everyone know this man's name. A 32-year-old Muslim man in Sweden applied for permission to burn a Torah and a Bible in the middle of Stockholm city center after the Quran was desecrated. And Sweden, being as liberal and as crazy as it is, they allowed the burning of the Quran in the first place, which they shouldn't have, allowed the burning of the Torah and the Bible. The state of Israel immediately said to its emissaries in Stockholm, this is bad, we need to find some way of stopping this. Oh, so they care when it's their book. That's very interesting. But this man, who is a G, staged the event, arrived there with his Torah and his Bible. And he said, no, I am better than this. And I am better than these people. I'm not an animal like these people. These books may not be my holy book, but they were holy to some of the prophets. They were holy to billions of people around the world. They're holy to people of the book. And I refuse to burn these books. And he took them home and treated them with reverence. That is a happy ending. And I just feel like, isn't that important? Isn't that such a cool way to behave? You know what? Yeah, I could be a dog like you. I could be scum like you. I could treat other people's holy emblems and books and relics like they're garbage. 
and offend everyone in the world because I'm disenfranchised with the country I was born in and I don't like their politics. No, this man was not a baby. This man was a Muslim. And he went down there. I've got the name Ahmad Alush is the name that people are telling me in the chat. Ahmad Alush, you are a hero. What you did is one of the most inspiring and, and the things I've seen since, since coming out of jail. It really put a smile on my face. I think you're an absolutely awesome person. No one expected it. No one knew what you were going to do. And you've completely defeated and shown up the enemies of civilization, the enemies of God everywhere in the world. Absolutely beautiful. So everyone Google this man and look up his story because it, it's almost enough to bring a tear to your eye. It's like, I don't know how he thought of that because he should be angry enough to just burn their books back, right? No, he's better than them. He's smarter than them. And uh, yeah, a pleasant ending to a very sad story, but there's no excuse for anybody to be doing that. And Ahmad Alush knew that and Muslims know that. And most civilized people in the world know that. So no, I do not endorse the burning of anyone's religious text or holy book. And it's sad that that's still making the news, isn't it? It's 2023. Alhamdulillah, Tristan made a lot of valid points here. What he said about the Iranian woman who burned the Quran offending Muslims worldwide because of her hatred for her homeland was spot on. I don't know much about Iranian culture and I do not wish to offend my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters in Iran. However, in Islam, culture never comes before religion and this horrible woman is a disgrace for desecrating our holy book. Tristan was right to berate her for her disgusting behaviour. Tristan then went on to discuss Muslim brother Ahmed Alosh who got permission from the Swedish government to stage a Bible and Torah burning event and showed tremendous class by making a public show of not burning these holy books because they were given to our prophets in Islam, namely Moses and Jesus, as guidance for humanity. This puts into perspective the religious empathy and respect monotheist faiths should be showing each other when it comes to at least opposing the burning of holy books and the attempts of the West to stop the worship of and belief in God. People of other faiths should also note that the West not only wants to eliminate Islam, they want to eradicate all religions and they are also seen as a threat to the liberal atheist establishment. Brother Ahmed Alosh is a true Muslim and a great representative of Islam. May Allah SWT bestow his blessings upon him. I was very impressed with how Tristan represented himself here. He's a very intelligent man. And I have to admit, if more Christians were as objective and fair as Tristan, there'd be a lot more harmony between Islam and Christianity. And we could possibly show unity in the fight against the constant evil that threatens our children in this modern era. It would be amazing if Tristan accepted Islam, but I don't think that is going to to happen to be honest. However, I can say that he represents his faith very well and he has my respect for standing up for Muslims and for congratulating Brother Ahmed Alosh for his show of class. Let's end with what Islam tells us about the Torah and the Bible. Muslims believe that God previously revealed himself to the earlier prophets of the Jews and Christians, such as Abraham, Moses and Jesus. Muslims therefore accept the teachings of both the Jewish Torah and of the Christian Gospels in their original form. In the Quran it says, it is Allah who sent down the book, the Quran, to you Prophet Muhammad with truth confirming what came before it and he sent down the Torah, Torah and the Injil, Gospel. Islam recognises that Noah, Abraham, Moses and Jesus are true messengers of God sent to guide humanity. They received revelation and were given scriptures that are as authentic in their original form as Muslims believe the Quran to be. Muslims also believe each new scripture either confirms or updates the law of the previous scriptures. However, unfortunately parts of these previous scriptures have been altered over time. The Quran has never been changed in remains as the final unchanged and preserved word of God Almighty. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on notifications as I'll be posting new content daily. Jazakallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.